What is going on guys, man? This episode was just so, so heartwarming and symbolic and oh my god, this is, I believe, the first episode of Sword Art Online, period. Like an entire episode with no action, no like how do we defeat the next boss, you know, no battle tactics, just straight up deliciousness. And yet again, just like the last episode, it was just so, so sad, but it was a great episode, and nobody died. I'm like, how is Sword Art Online making me feel this way, and no one has died yet? I mean, really? But not only is Yuki an awesome, strong, just inspirational character, but she actually inspires people in the anime as well. She inspired Asuna to talk to her mom, and then we got that beautiful scene at the end. Yuki is just awesome man and i just really love how asuna says that yuki is the strongest person that she knows and i'm like you know what that you know just the fact she says that really says a lot because you know in a physical state like the real world physical state yuki is probably the weakest person because you know she's attached to that machine or whatever but just the fact that someone in that situation can inspire asuna of all people you know someone that survive the original Sword Art Online incident that really speaks volumes about Yuki's character and I mean fuck man this entire episode and then Yuki says that Austin is the strongest person she's ever met and I'm just like you know these girls are just inspiring each other and Austin is such a good friend and I'm so happy that everyone at the school is you know welcoming Yuki with open arms but I don't know why but it was very touching when Yuki was reading that boring ass book and I'm not sure why but originally I expected her to have some trouble reading because you know not because I think she's stupid or anything but you know she was taken out of school around the fourth grade and she's been attached to that machine for years and years like 10 plus years so I mean, I wasn't expecting her to read that well, but I mean, she shut me up, man. She shut up everybody else in this. And even uh, Asuna was like, are you sure you can read this? And she was like, hold on, girl. Hold on, girl. Let me show you out right now. And she even brought her to tears. And just the entire scene with the camera is beautiful. And Kirito is a god, man. He is a god. I mean, he is the reason why Asuna found Yuki in the first place. He's the reason why Asuna can make her dreams come true and why she was able to see her old house and everything. I mean, Kirito is just the godfather of this anime. And Yuki is just so kind-hearted, man. I mean, Asuna is already doing all of this for her. And she's still like, you know, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to, you know, take you out here if it's going to make you late, blah, blah, blah. When she's already doing all of this for her. And just the fact that she's not like, oh, I want to go here, I want to go here. You know, I don't give a damn what you got to do. I want to go there because, you know, I'm running out of time. That just says so much about a character because normally, I'm not going to say normally, but a lot of people in that situation will be like, hey, I want to do this, I want to do this. You have to do this for me because I'm dying. But just the fact that Yuki just cares so much about Asuna. And I really did enjoy that scene where... Austin is trying to make her feel as alive as possible, even talking about marriage and that joke about uh, the Yuki Yuki situation. That was just hilarious. I was waiting for that to be animated. I remember I remember I chuckled to myself when I read that, and it was still hilarious here. And I'm just so glad that Austin is really making her feel alive and like she's actually in the real world and she's forgetting about her situation even just for a few minutes because that can mean you know the world to someone so this episode was just beautiful and the fact that Asuna was able to talk her mother into going into the virtual world was just amazing to me I thought she was gonna be like you know what fuck no hell no I'm not gonna go there but I mean she was at first but but am I the only one that thinks that her avatar is hot I mean uh hot milk fairy who can beat that but that entire scene was beautiful. So a combination of the cedar trees, Asuna's talk no jutsu, and the bunnies coming out of nowhere brought Asuna's mother to tears, which I never thought that we would ever see because she's like this stern, strong, you know, my my word is the last word woman ever that we've seen. And I mean, it's just nice to see that she has a human side as well. And she actually says, Asuna, you can go to the school for one more year if you keep up your grades, I will accept 
what's going on. And I like how Austin has said that she wants to make everyone around her happy. And she says, she basically says that she wants to devote her life to Carito. That's basically the gist of it when her, mo when her mother said, so you're prepared to live the rest of your life for someone. And I thought that was a really nice touch in how she actually didn't say his name, but we all knew. I thought that was really nice. And the writing in this episode is just, I mean, just pure deliciousness, man. Just the fact that Yuki says that her mother said that God, God will not put any more on you than you can bear. And she said that I want to hear my mother's words, not what the Bible says. That is such a real person's, a real child's, you know, thoughts, man, because... You know, I've had a heavily religious family when I was growing up, and that's exactly what I thought. I'm like, you know, Mom, I want to hear how you feel. You know, I don't want to hear you quote the Bible all the time. But like she said, I understand now that I'm older what she was trying to say, that it was really her feelings, you know, trying to help me and just trying to bring me up the right way in life. And, you know, it this episode, man, it just seems like Yuki is just such a natural child, and not just some anime character, not something that someone just drew up and is just writing just to make us be like, damn, she's an awesome person. Like that line and just seeing how she was as a child is like the closest thing to a real child as you can get in my opinion because, I mean, she even said that she tried to smile even when she didn't want to just to make other people around her happy. I mean, who does that on a daily basis? Just, just about everyone. So just the fact that she can relate so much to us, well, to me anyway, it just speaks volumes. That's why I love this arc so much. And it really makes you thankful for your own health and what you do have and the family that you have left and your friends and et cetera, et cetera. I can go on and on and on about this episode and arc in general, but I am happy that, you know, uh, Asuna and her mother can patch things up and Yuki is like an inspiration to everyone, like I said, even in the anime world. But the most impressive thing to me in this entire episode was Yuki's analogy of herself. Like she tackled both sides of the lessons that anime and that we usually hear on almost a day-to-day -day basis. Like one, always be yourself, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Don't, you know, don't care what anybody else thinks about you. And she straight up said that, I will always tell everyone what's on my mind and what's in my heart. If they don't like it, then fuck them, basically. And then she also said that sometimes it's necessary to act like you're, you know, you're happy. And, you know, usually you don't hear that, you know, you don't hear both sides from the same person. Like, especially in the same episode, because they are the exact opposite of each other. And the way I see it, the way I, I want to believe she meant that is that, Sometimes you have to act like you're happy to keep other people happy because, you know, other people may be in a worse situation than you and, you know, you don't want to bring them down and you have to do everything that you can to, you know, keep them happy because they may not be able to take it. Like one more bad thing in their life, they may just, you know, say, fuck the world. You know, I'm not talking about like suicide or anything, but you know what I mean. I think that's what she was getting at because her mother, you know, she was the one that, you know, where the... AIDS originated from because of the bad blood transfusion or whatever. So I think it was necessary for her to put on that act and to keep her mother smiling, you know, as much as she could. And on the other side, you know, you also do need to be yourself and not give a damn what anyone thinks. So in my opinion, there are times for both sides of that, you know, same coin. So I really did enjoy that little input that Yuki had and I just love the hell out of this arc. I apologize, not many jokes are thrown in here, but this is a very serious arc and a very touching one and it just hits home for me for some reason and I'm not sure why and I can just blab on about the symbolism and what I loved about this episode and arc all damn day but I'm going to go ahead and end this video. All I have to say is next episode man some grown men are going to cry like babies I'm telling you but this has been JB the Chia. Like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you guys thought about it and I'm out. Oh yeah, getting caught up in all this Yuki talk in my review, I forgot to mention a few things about Asuna's mom. I like how she, you know, the vibe that I got from her when she first went to the virtual world is that she actually kind of, kind of likes it. I wouldn't be surprised if after this arc, she actually went in there and went on missions with Asuna. That would be awesome. I would love to see her mom flying around and just the scene with, the, with her parents. It was just awesome seeing Asuna say that. Austin's mom was her grandparents' jewel, like they were her pride and joy, and that just seemed to shock Austin's mother so much because, 
I mean, you could tell that she never really heard that, and they said that they're so proud of what she's doing, and she always has a place to come back to if she ever gets tired. And, I mean, everything, just everything in that scene ended up bringing her to tears. It was just amazing. I just love this episode. But anyway, I had to tell you guys that that part was amazing as well, and I would love to see that awesome, hot-ass fairy milk back in the game. But tell me what you guys think. This has been JB Chia. Like, comment, subscribe, and now I'm out for real.